Welcome to Mr. Sanchez and his math. Today we're going to be working with 5.4b for presentance of one-step problems involving multiplication and division with whole numbers using equations with a letter standing for the unknown quantity. Okay, so first of all, how can you represent a problem situation? We're going to start with an equation, guys. This is a mathematical statement composed of algebraic and or numeric expression set equal to each other. For example, here they are telling me that t is equal to a divided by a. Also, one letter represent the unknown quantity. As you can see here, it's the same equation. However, we're using the inverse operation. A is going to be equal to 2 times t. Equal sign at the beginning or the end and unknown in any position. So the unknown could be at the beginning, like the first part, that is t is equal to a divided by 2. Or the unknown could be at the end, a divided by 2 equal to t. Both of those are the same. Then we also have pictograph. These are, these are types of symbols or pictures that are used to represent a specific number of objects. Here, for example, is whenever you have a word problem and you just draw to represent it. That's something very useful to understand and analyze the word problems. Also, we're going to be using diagrams that are graphs that convey mathematical concepts. The diagrams, the most famous one, are the strip diagrams, the one that we use uh, to represent some word problems and, of course, to be able to analyze what we have to do. Now, let's show time. Remember that for every word problem, we always need to do our yes annotations. We're going to be highlighting the parts in yellows, yellow. We're going to be highlighting the values in green. We're going to be highlighting the total in red, and we're going to underline the question. So I'm going to read this question first, this problem. A gardener is planting six rows of spring bulbs, and each row has 15 bulbs. How many bulbs is he planting? Let B equal the total number of bulbs. So the unknown letter here is B, right? So now let's annotate. We have the parts, six rows. Then we have 15 bulbs in each of those parts. And then how many bulbs is he planting? Remember that B is the equal of total of number of bulbs. So that's my total, right? Now let's create a representation using the street diagrams. In the representation, we have six rows that mean that I have six parts that are represented here. Each of those uh, rows have 15 bulbs. Now you can see the 15 here representing. We have six 15 bulbs. And then the B that is a total goes on the top because that's what I need to find, okay? Now I'm gonna create an equation. B that is a total is gonna be equal to six parts of 15 each. With that being said, I want you to pay attention to something. There are more ways to represent this diagram as an equation. What? Yeah. Why? Because whenever you see this 6 times 15, it's not just that. It could be also a total. It's going to be equal to 15 times 6, right? The other one could be 15 bulbs in each are equal to the total amount of bulbs divided by 6 rows. That's another way to represent it. Also, if it's not 15, it's going to be which one? Yes. 6 is equal to 6, the amount of part, I have 6 equal parts that is going to be equal to the total number of bulbs divided by 15 bulbs in each. And the last one that is the easiest one, as I said before, 6 times 15 equal to B is the same than B equal to 6 times 15. I want you to please remember this because this is something very tricky that you can have in every type of exercise that you could have. And please, I don't want you to get wrong. All of these four or five equations that you see here, they matches with this. They match with this street diagram. Now let's solve. First, we're going to solve 15 times 6. 6 times 5, I'm going to do a tic-tac-toe. 6 times 5 is equal to, yes, 30. So I'm going to put the 0. I'm going to regroup the 3. Now, 6 times 1 is equal to 6 plus the 3 equal to 9. So that means that my answer is 90. 90 what? 90 is the total number of bulbs. So now look what I did. I put the 90 instead of the B. So now all of my equations make sense. 90 is equal to 15 times 6. 15 is equal to 90 divided by 6. 6 is equal to 90 divided by 15. 6 times 15 is equal to 90. So yeah, there's a way to solve this, right? Now, with division, there are two, different, two different types of divisions. We have partitive and quotative. Quantitative, you know the total and the amount of groups and the amount of parts. I like to call it partitive, and I remind that like always is like parts, part, parts, partitive. What do you know? I know the parts. That means that I'm looking for the quantity or the size of each group. On the other side, 
if there is another type of division, is whenever you know the total and the quantity or size of each group of our part. Here you know the quantity, qualitative, qualitative, quantity. So you're looking for the groups, for the amount of parts that you have, okay? So what type of division are these word problems? Let's read both, and then you're gonna tell me. Rick earned $133 in total last week for seven hours of work. How much does Rick earn per hour? Find P, the amount that Rick earns per hour. The other example that we have is Rick earned $133 last week for $7 the hour. How many hours did he work in total? Find P, the amount of hours that he worked in total. So be very intentional with the question because the question they are telling you what to do, right? And the, and the question is telling you if this is partitive or if this is quotative. Also remember what I told you, let's go back. Partitive, you know the parts and the total. In quotative, you know the total and you know the quantity in each of the parts, right? So now we're gonna identify which one of those is partitive or quotative. So we will have to do our annotations to identify this, right? So in the first one, 133 is the total, so I know the total and I know the parts. So whenever I have one division that I know the parts, how do we call them? I think you know, right? Now, they are asking me for the quantity in each part. I think that you will be able to solve that one. Now the second one, you have the total and you know the quantity in each part. That means that you're looking for what? Yes, you're looking for the amount of parts. Now, you should have an idea already. However, let's represent to analyze the word problems. I'm putting here now my two strip diagrams and I let highlighted there the question just because this is gonna let me understand what do we have to do. In the first one, I have the total that is 133, and I know that he works seven hours for seven hours. So we have seven equal parts, and we want to know how much did he earn per hour. So P will go in each of those parts, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the quantity. Whenever you're looking for the quantity, that means that this is a partitive. Yes? Now the next one. In the next one, we have the total of $133 and you have the quantities that are $7. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Do we have to represent the quantities like the previous one? Do we have seven parts? I don't think so, we don't have seven parts. We only know that one part is equal to seven. So that means that the P is equal to how many hours? So look how the representation is kind of different. So in this one that I'm looking for parts and I have the total and I have the quantity in each part, that means that this one, we're looking for parts, so this one is a quotative division, yes? Now, let's create an equation for each. In the first one is 133 divided by seven. However, in the other one is also 133 divided by seven. So at the end, Mr. Sanchez, is gonna be the same answer? Yes, it's gonna be the same answer. But let's wait a little bit what's gonna happen. Remember that we have all our possible equations. So as I told you before, if you are doing division, that means that you can do the inverse and you are just changing the parts of the equation. 133 is gonna be equal to P times seven. Also seven is gonna be equal to 133 divided by P. Another one on the other side could be 133 divided by seven is equal to P. And seven P, that means seven times P is equal to 133. Now let's solve. Here I have 133 divided by seven. Always I like to do a tic-tac-toe to help me to find very quickly. And if you know your timetables, it's gonna be even better, right? So now one divided by seven, can you do that? How many groups of seven fit into one? None. That means that I have to multiply seven times zero is equal to zero. One minus zero, one. I'm gonna bring down my next number, there's a three. Now I'm dividing 13 divided into seven. How many groups of seven can I create into 13? Can I create one? Yeah, can I create two? No, because two, it says 14. So actually, the, in the, my equation, in my quotient, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be putting only one. Seven times one is equal to seven. And then I have to subtract. 13 minus seven, the three I cannot. So the three will become a 13, and the one will become a zero. They remember that the one is not actually a one, it was a 10. And the three borrowed 10 from that 10. So the 10 became a zero. 13 minus seven is equal to six. And zero minus zero is zero, right? Now I'm gonna move down the next number, bring down the next number, the three, I'm gonna put it down. Now I'm dividing 63. I'm gonna ask you a question, how many groups of seven fit into 63? 
Let me see my hand. My one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. So nine groups of seven is equal to 63. I am going to subtract both. And whenever you do three minus three, three, three minus three, zero, six minus six, zero. My answer is 19. Yeah. Now I'm going to change my values so you can tell that it makes sense. Seven times 19 is 133. However, it means something different in each word problem. In the first one, they are asking, how much does Rick earn per hour? So per hour, he earned $19. So each of those P in my representation are 19. In the second one, Rick works for a total of 19 hours. So every hour was $7, 19 hours was in total. So this is just a quick explanation, guys, that if you know that you have to divide, it's very good, but it is also important for you to understand when it's portative and when it's quotative, okay? I know it was a lot, but we made it. So thank you very much. This was Mr. Sanchez and his math. Today we were solving one step problems involving multiplication and division for the whole numbers using equations. Here are some notes for you because I want you to take them. And if you need to freeze any part of the video, you can to be able to solve your exercise. I hope it was useful. Have a wonderful day.